It turns out that the immune system is really critical for healthy brain development. That there are a lot of factors that the immune system makes that drive neuron development, the microglial cells in the brain, so the support cells of the brain produce these same factors. So what we now know, what we used to think were two very separate systems, we now know are two highly integrated systems. Actually, my work began because of parents, because parents had questions about their child's immune system, how their children were sick all the time, or potentially even the idea that maybe vaccination may have something to do with autism. So that is actually how I initially got into it when the Mind Institute was first formed here. Okay, MAR stands for Maternal Autoantibody-Related Autism, and that is something that we found here when we were screening women who had children with autism. We screened their blood for reactivity, for antibody reactivity, to proteins that are in the fetal brain. So as the brain's developing, it has a number of proteins that it requires for that healthy development. And it turns out that about 20% of women who have children with autism have antibodies in their system that recognize these proteins. So we think that these antibodies are interfering with the way these critical proteins are working in the developing brain. So if an antibody comes in, it's much like a key, a lock and a key. The antibody finds its target and binds to that target. It will stop that protein from being able to do its job. And that those proteins are really important for healthy brain development. So we think that these antibodies that the women are making are changing the way the brain develops because they're interfering with those important proteins. I think, and I'm really grateful for everybody who wants to participate in this study for us. I think the best information we can get is one, we're going to look at a new population of people that we've never studied. We've never studied anyone from South America, which will be very interesting for us. We hope that it will provide women who enroll in the study with information about their risk of having a child with autism or perhaps the pathway with which their current child may have gone down the path of having autism. We think that by understanding earlier that you can do intervention earlier, we hope. Um, that by identifying a child very early through the mother's test, even before that child shows all the signs of autism, we might be able to help get them into treatment sooner. I think that, that's very exciting for us because we, we did a sample in Italy early on and found really similar results to the U.S. We're, we're studying a group in Finland right now, so we would like to expand our worldwide, um, sort of our worldwide um, sample set to see if the incidence is the same in different populations from different backgrounds to see if... Um, you know, perhaps we can learn something more about this type of autism in, in new populations. I think, I think this is a mutually beneficial. It helps us in our research, but we hope that it provides information for the women who participate, either, as I said, about perhaps how their child may have have become autistic or may have developed autism or for their future children. You know, what if, if they, you're already at high risk, if you've already had a child with autism, then we know that you have about a 20% chance increased risk of having a second child. Hopefully we can provide information. So it's a two-way street. We, mm -hmm. we, we want to provide information and also hopefully gain insight into the presence of these antibodies and other from other countries and women in other countries, other populations. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.